John Wick has become something of a pop culture phenomenon, and we can totally understand why. He's awesome. Just look at him go. Pow, 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 pow. John Wick operates in the mysterious world beyond our own, with plenty of mysteries yet to be unearthed. We're sure to learn more when John Wick 4 eventually hits the big screen, but we've managed to dig up a bit more info with the help of some deleted scenes. Like John Wick himself, the movies are finely tuned and don't actually have as many deleted scenes as you might imagine. They get the job done, in and out, no witnesses, I, I mean no deleted scenes. Let's dive into the shadowy world of the Continental and John Wick. During the events of John Wick Chapter 2, Keanu Reeves' efficient man of action finds himself in Rome on a mission. It's a great part of the movie, as we get to see a different Continental Hotel and John operating remotely in a different part of the world where he's just as recognized from his peers. But Rome has a dark, albeit ridiculous, secret about the hidden world that John operates in. Despite being an assassin, John is also a man of God, as evidenced by his tattoos. So it would make sense that he would make a pilgrimage to the Vatican when in Rome. Only John isn't going to the Vatican to talk to God. As it turns out, the Vatican itself is also embedded in John's world. He makes his way to a rather busy building, complete with nuns rushing about. He is granted access, and by declaring the name of his target, John and Antonio, he is given access to his holiness himself, who seemingly blesses the contract. We can understand why this was ultimately cut from the movie. It doesn't add too much to the narrative. But how nuts is it that the Pope is in on the secret worlds that John inhabits? We have to wonder, are the nuns armed? Does the Pope know some fighting moves? How is he involved? This scene brings up more questions than answers, and we want these questions answered. John Wick Parabellum brought in a whole bunch of antagonists for John to contend with, none more prevalent than Zero. He was a bit of an odd one, to be honest. He was cold and efficient, but he was a total fanboy around John. Played by Mark DeCascos, Zero was tasked by the Adjudicator to bring John down after he was labeled excommunicado. Zero got to have the big finale fight scene with John right after he fought two guys from the Raid movies, so the finale was certainly action-packed. But DeCascos actually is bummed out that some of his scenes were removed from the movie, stuff he promised was very cool. Specifically, he mentioned there was a scene between him and the adjudicator that we did not get to see. DeCascos mentioned that a lot of history was also cut from the movie, so there must be something neat that ties back to the adjudicator and Zero. What this is remains unknown, and we can only speculate, but it's enough to cause the actor to show regret about the final cut. Perhaps the adjudicator had to test Zero first and we had a one versus many fight scene, or a shocking revelation was cut in order to be used in Chapter 4. Damascus was hoping the scene would be included on home video special features, but this was not the case, keeping the moment shrouded in secrecy. Part of what makes the John Wick films so great is the great cast of supporting characters that populate the movies. One of the earliest associates we meet in the franchise is Aurelio, the mechanic who owns the shady garage played by John Leguizamo. He takes care of John in his car and has ties to the Continental. In the second film, John is tasked by Santonio D'Antonio, seriously, what a name, to eliminate his own sister. John initially refuses, despite being in possession of a marker which would compel him to undertake any request. Santonio burns down John's house, but that was the tip of the iceberg when it came down to convincing John to honor his blood oath. Santonio and his goons pay Aurelio a visit at his garage, likely before the burning of John's house. Aurelio verbally spars with the Italian crime lord for a bit before Santonio makes his way to John's damaged car. Aurelio states that Santonio cannot buy this car, despite the crime lord insisting he's not interested in buying a muscle car. Aurelio states that the owner has attachment issues towards the car, but Santonio doesn't care about cars. He asks Aurelio where it is, it being his stash of coins that act as a currency in the underworld. Aurelio takes a beating and Santonio then threatens the lives of all of his employees, which gets Aurelio to give up the stash. Santonio then declares that Aurelio works for him now. It overall doesn't add too much to the plot, as Aurelio doesn't return for the rest of the movie, nor does he appear in Chapter 3, but it's actually really well acted and fun to watch as a sort of short film. 
Clocking in at just under two minutes, this scene actually offers quite a bit of nuance and foreshadowing and includes a guest appearance by Charlie, otherwise known as the cleaner. He's the guy you pay to clean up any sort of mess if you catch our drift. And according to Charlie, business is good thanks to the actions of John Wick. The rest of the scene shows Winston and Santonio discussing things while in Rome. From the get-go, it's clear that Winston thinks Santonio is being reckless, but by the end of the scene, we get that Santonio also has no respect for Winston, relegating him to a glorified butler. Winston mentions to Santonio, who is out for blood, that he can't change everything at once, and that there is such a thing as rules. As the head of the Continental in New York, it's rules that govern Winston's life. Naturally, the young and hot-headed Santonio states that rules are meant to be broken. Ironically, the breaking of Continental rules later on in the movie is what will result in Santonio's ultimate demise at the hands of John Wick. Because of Santonio's flagrant disrespects to Winston, we can understand why the big boss of the New York Continental was secretly rooting for John. Sure, they're friends, but John did conduct business on hotel grounds. Yet Winston, no fan of Santonio, would ultimately give John an hour's heads up. This scene helps reinforce Winston's decision at the end of the movie and sets things up nicely. John Wick may be a former renowned man of many talents, but he since put that behind him, at least come the early moments of the first film. He's married, likes working on his car, and tries to live a normal life. With such a life, things might seem a little more, well, mundane than they once were. So John needs to help pass the time with a hobby. Thanks to a deleted scene from the first movie, we know just what John's hobby is, and it's simultaneously unexpected and totally fitting with the character. This particular scene was filmed, but it wasn't included with the bonus material. Instead, Keanu Reeves actually talked about the scene in question while promoting Chapter 3 Parabellum. He described John's pastime as being a book restorer, fixing up old leather-bound editions. Keanu described the hobby as his vocation, and when you think about it, the hobby may seem totally random at first, but it totally fits with his persona. John is a fairly solitary individual, despite having so many peers. We get the impression he'd rather become a hermit and remove himself from society, just spending time with his wife. By fixing old books, John gets to pay attention to detail and nuance, but to help fix things as opposed to unloading a clip in someone's face. Interestingly, John's passion was specifically restoring old Victorian children's books, and if you keep your eyes peeled around John's house, you'll spot some of those books lurking about. That sums up our brief look at the deleted scenes from the John Wick franchise. Why do you think the film series has been so secretive about deleted scenes? Usually those are included with the Blu-rays, but this seems to be an exception. Could they be saving material for later movies, or do they use most of what they shoot and discard the rest? Let us know what you think and what your favorite deleted scene is. We personally love the Vatican scene, even if it's a little controversial. Don't forget to hit the subscribe button and give this video a like. Thanks for watching. Thank you.